okay so in this video i'll be showing you how to automatically spin up vms on proxmox and use those vms for um, installing uh, kubernetes on those uh, vms so they'll be added as part of a cluster and you don't have to you know uh, fiddle around going in each vm sshing into each vm and setting up everything um, so initially as usual um, I was also using kubeADM um, for you know setting up each VM one by one. It is not very time effective and it's really error prone because if you mess up one place, um, that node might not be useful. And that's what happened with me a couple months ago where I accidentally messed up the CNI of this particular VM and it's not really useful since then. So I needed a um, template a standardized way of you know uh, setting up VMs and that's what I'm going to show you today so let's start the demo um, I'll just do Terra Terraform apply so if you want to see this Terraform script that I'm about to run you can go ahead and uh, check this out uh, check this uh, repo out and uh, check out what options are available um, in this case, before I run this, I'll just um, show what will happen in case of multiple masters. So I'll just say each VM will have 4096 two cores and we'll have two master nodes. Let's say three master nodes. Right. So I'm going to show you how to make um, three uh, master nodes and two worker nodes um, all of them will be having four gigs of memory and two cores right so let's approve this so this will take a couple of minutes depending on your um, system uh, if you have like uh, ssds like i do it will not take too much time it will be uh, the terraform script will be finished within uh, two to three minutes and uh, this is also assuming that you're not you know making uh, a very big cluster so in this case i'm just spinning up five vms um, this is still going to take some time um, the smaller you know the the less number of vms that you spin up with this the faster this will be um, so proxmox can this the provider that i'm using actually only uh, configures four vms at a time for some reason i'm not quite sure why um, but uh, that's how it is and since we have five vms this will take some more time to you know finish up setting up that one extra vm uh, so as you can see we have multiple um, virtual machines spinning up each other each of them is having two gigs of memory right now but um, this will soon be updated once the clone has finished uh, so actually i'm cloning um, all of these nodes from a vm template and uh, this VM template is having an image uh, with cloud in it. Um, you can set this up if you go to if you go to one of my repositories, which is named like Arch Cloud something Cloud Image, I guess. Yeah, this one. So this is just a gist of uh, you know instructions um, to set up your cloud image um, I'm basically cloning uh, so once I've set up this VM you know with all my configurations and everything I shut this VM down and I just add a cloud init drive and in the cloud init section I'm just providing all my settings so all the VMs that you see over here will copy these particular settings and you know um, cloud init will go ahead and configure your um, each of your nodes uh, one by one um, and you don't have to worry about you know duplicate SSH keys and duplicate host name that sort that sort of stuff. Um, so as you can see, it's again cloning the fifth VM now. So this is why this this particular demo will take some time actually because this uh, one VM will be configured later. Okay, so let's wait for this VM to be configured. Uh, until then, I'll just recap. Uh, I have a VM template which has all the configurations that I need. Uh, so this VM contains all the configs. So in this VM I have installed ZSH, my ZSH um, theme, and uh, installed some packages. So the packages I have installed are also I think mentioned in this repository. 
yeah so these are the packages that I have installed in in that base template image right and uh, once this image is uh, when this once this VM is closed uh, clone then each of these uh, settings are updated one by one so as you can see this is done um, and amazing thing about this particular ter Terraform script is that uh, this also generates uh, an Ansible inventory and you can you know find it over here if I do cat okay so this is the same file basically and uh, it's just you know printing it out as an output um, but now what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're able to SSH into all these VMs so since uh, I have provided um, my public keys uh, to to cloud in it uh, I'm able to SSH into all of these VMs without any issues so let's see what to do Okay, so what I what I want to do in this case is I want to go in the last master node. Uh, so in this case, it's key master two, right? Um, because this will be my control plane, and this is where I'll be setting up um, kubectl, right? Um, so in a sense, you want the last master uh, to be your control plane uh, so it's not done yet it's just you know uh, terraform script has spun up all these vms um, now i'm going to um, run an ansible script that will you know set up kubernetes and join all these uh, worker and master nodes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just say ansible playbook playlist run this particular playbook so if you want to check out the playbook that i'm uh, using over here you can go in this particular repository and the playbook that I'm going to show you today is none other than K8 setup. So this is all the steps that this playbook will be using. Uh, we have a host file, right? So this is the host file that I uh, mentioned earlier, um, that I showed you earlier, sorry. So if I do a cat from here, it will be the same file. Yep, so we are using the same um, inventory to set up Ansible now. Uh, set up, sorry set up kubernetes now on all these nodes and since i have already marked you know which one of these are master and which one of these are workers i have control uh, within the playbook to you know uh, capture master nodes and worker nodes separately and i'm also passing the vars.json file um, i won't be showing you my vars.json file because it has mm, some i think password or something let's see if i can find the example file there we go okay no i think i can show you this file so cat rs.json mm, oh right because it's in this place okay okay so this is my uh, wars so you can see time zone I'm in Asia Kolkata. Username is Naman. Uh, why Naman? Because this is what I have set up over here in cloud in it. So as you can see, the username is Naman. That's what you want to set up over here as well. And CIDR is uh, what I'm using for flannel. You can change this up if you like, uh, but I think most people won't be doing that. So this is also in, uh, what do you call, the example file as well. So if I go over here, this is in the example files as well, right? And yeah, and I should mention that uh, this Ansible script is a bit hacky because the latest release of CNI plugins does not have Flannel actually. So this is a breaking change actually. Uh, there are a couple issues asking them to, you know, uh, re-add this finally because the repository is not really, um, some people have tried building the binary again from scratch, but they have not been able to do that. So uh, I'm using the last release actually, this one, 
and I'm extracting the flannel binary from this particular file, right? Uh, you can go ahead and check out what I'm doing in the playbook. Uh, but if I show you quickly, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so we are getting this release 0 0.91 and I'm picking up this particular zip file and I'm extracting it to obscene bin, right? So uh, do this if you want to. Um, this is the only way that I could figure this. Uh, I would have much rather built the binary myself, but I didn't have much time to do that, unfortunately. So if you guys, uh, you know, uh, have any way to build that binary, let me know. I'll add this. Uh, I'll add that those instructions in the Ansible um, configuration if possible. Right. So let's go ahead and configure our um kubernetes cluster so this will you know just follow a couple of steps uh, in fact i'll just open the playbook and describe it one by one so we are installing kubernetes control plane and kubectl in the master nodes uh, installing kubernetes node package from the worker node so these are all uh, from arch repositories um, what else so after this i'm installing these packages from the arch repositories for all the nodes not just for workers or masters for all the nodes we need to have these common packages um, once that's done we are you know doing the same mode same mode adding uh, the user to docker group um, switching off swap if there is any and uh, yeah so uh, this is one hacky part that i'm doing right now but you know in future hopefully uh, we'll able to you know get the binary from some place hopefully uh, we don't have to do this um, in future um, i'm fixing the permission after extracting uh, and also for some reason arch linux is uh, i'm sorry kubelet is trying to you know um, find the binaries in this location as well so i'm just copying these files uh, from this directory to this directory and fixing up the permission so all of the files are executable after copy Uh, I should also mention that uh, I'm also installing etcd uh, from the AUR um, using yay and uh, if you see in my notes I've mentioned the prerequisites for running this uh, particular um, playbook I uh, should be able to SSH into all the VMs uh, all VMs should have IP table slash NFT because that's being used for uh, one of the packages that we are trying to install um, there will be a conflict with IP tables so make sure that uh, you know the template VM that you have uh, has this particular package instead of IP tables um, make sure that ye is also installed by default unfortunately I couldn't figure out how to you know install ye on the fly so this is just a prerequisite now and you should also have a vars example you know the vars JSON that I showed you earlier so that's that if you are able to you know uh, fill these prerequisites if you are able to finish these prerequisites then this playbook should be uh, available for execution there won't be any er errors <coughs> so yeah let's go back to the playbook so as you can see it's installing at CD where we left off so there we go so once this is done, all the dependencies are installed. You know, uh, what th what will happen after this is basically it will uh, remove any .cube file if there is any. It will you know remove config files. You know, restart Docker, and uh, make sure that kubelet services turn stopped, right? Um, and after that, I'm just you know in using kubeadm to set up the cluster. Um, so master zero will be um, usually the last VM, K master two, um, and uh, using this, um, so you can see over here K master two, right? And uh, in this VM, basically these commands will be run, and uh, kubeadm in it will also be run in this uh, particular node, which will make K master two in our case um, the control uh, node as well and the master node as well right so once this is done i'm just copying the uh, kube config 
to the right directory um, installing flannel and you know getting the join command and pasting it to a local file um, once that is done uh, in all the workers I'm installing um, yeah, I'm joining the cluster um, uh, I mean sorry uh, in all the nodes except for you know master 0 which is in our case K master 2 um, I'll be joining the cluster right and in K master again from master 0 I'll be marking worker nodes and master nodes uh, with their roles right so this is done so if we go back to our K master 2 node right and I'll just do kubectl get nodes Okay, so watch, let's watch this. Okay, there we go. So our cluster is ready, it took some time, but uh, all nodes are in ready state now, and you can, you know go ahead and start using this uh, cluster for Kubernetes. Um, yeah, thanks for looking at this video. See you next time.